Hi, this is Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. This program example comes from Chapter 8, which covers FIR filters. In this example, we will look at two types, common types, of FIR filters, linear phase and minimum phase. The advantage of minimum phase filters is that they introduce the least amount of delay, but they do exhibit some phase distortion. On the other hand, Linear phase filters have zero phase distortion, but they can introduce a fair amount of delay equal to the filter length divided by two. An FIR filter is necessarily symmetric with its peak value exactly in the middle. So any IR tail appears that appears after the main peak will also show up before the peak, an artifact known as pre-echo. Now, pre-echo is a low-level ringing that occurs prior to the onset of a signal, which can often be heard leading up to a transient, especially in a quiet background. And this has the effect of softening a sharp transient. More drastic EQ curves, for example, with steeper transitions, lower stop bands, flatter pass bands, these all result in greater pre-echo compared to more gradual EQ curves. So while linear phase filters are ideal at preserving the overall wave shape of the signal they affect, they may require a larger order, impose a larger delay, and introduce pre-echo when compared to other types of filters. Now in this programming example, an FIR filter will be designed using a filter design and analysis tool called Filter Designer. Uh, this is in MATLAB, unfortunately, uh, at the time of this writing, it is currently unavailable in Octave. So since the filter uh, effects are more easily heard with transients, a recording of castanets and silence will be used, and they're available for download from digitalaudiotheory.com. So let's design the filter. First, we'll open up the filter designer and select the following options. Let's use a response type. Let's make this a low pass. Okay, the design method, so it's going to be an FIR filter, and this is going to be least squares. We're going to set the order to 256, our sample rate to 44.1. Let's set the, uh, the last pass frequency will be at 1K, and our stop frequency will be 2K, so that means we have a transition band between 1 and 2K. So then all we're going to do is we're going to click Design down here, and we can see the magnitude response straight away. So this is a linear phase filter. So you can see that in the passband, the phase is a straight line. If we take a look at the group delay here, we'll see that it's a constant 128 samples. So this tells us every frequency is delayed by the exact same amount, so there's no phase distortion introduced. And the delay is exactly our filter order 256 over 2, so 128. And if we take a look at the impulse response, we will see that it is symmetric. The peak value is uh, nearly 3 milliseconds, and the IR tail on this side is mirrored to before the peak. And this is what creates our pre-echo. So we're going to bring this to the workspace by clicking File, Export. And these coefficients, let's give them, we'll call them A underscore LP. So these will be our linear phase coefficients. Now we're done with the filter designer. Here are the coefficients. Okay. So we're going to use these coefficients to also generate a minimum phase version of the same filter using the command FIR min phase right here. So we're going to save that into a variable called A underscore MP for minimum phase. Now the castanets will be filtered with both of these using the filter command. Let's load it up. Let's listen to the castanets first. Whoops. 
That's the filtered version. Let's listen to the unfiltered version. Okay, so what we're going to hear though are these back to back. So we're going to listen first to the filtered version using the linear phase coefficients. Then we're going to listen again to the filtered version using the minimum phase coefficients. Listen carefully for to the sharpness of the transients. Now we're passing these as the numerator. We also have to pass the denominator for the filter command. But since this is an FIR filter, there is no denominator, so we'll simply pass 1. Okay. Well, let's just run this whole thing. Now, as you listen to the two outputs, can you hear a difference? In this case, to best preserve the transient, we would likely select the minimum phase filter, which preserves the sharpness of the attack. However, examine the group delay of this filter. It is highly nonlinear, even in the passband, which is where we are here. We're going from DC up to just 1K. So this is the passband. We can see a highly nonlinear group delay. The GRP delay, or group delay function, takes as arguments the feed forward and feedback coefficients, the frequency resolution, so how many frequencies to analyze at, and the sample rate. This lets us see the frequencies that are undergoing the most amount of phase distortion. In the next video, which is from chapter 9, we're going to look at FIR filters in the frequency domain. So thanks for watching.